guys, it's Trish from Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. Today we're going to be making a really, really fun necklace with some items from Jesse James Beads and dress it up. As you can see there, we're using some of that gorgeous enamel chain from Jesse James Beads. This beautiful peaches and cream strand. Heirloom buttons from Dress It Up. And also Nostalgic Treasure from Dress It Up as well. You're going to need some needle and thread. You're also going to need some ribbon clamp ends. A clasp. And I just pulled out some of these flowers that I might use. Um, I ended up not using them, but I just had them on standby in case I wanted to. A glue gun and scissors, various trims and laces, some ribbon, some flush cutters, and round nose and flat nose, a pen that we can use instead of the round nose pliers, some 20 gauge wire just to keep on hand in case we need it and then some 18 gauge wire to make the frame. We also are going to need a crimper, some uh, beading wire, and also some crimps. So Let's get started here. First I'm going to take the wire here and straighten it out a little bit and take my round nose and make a loop on the end of it. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just take the wire around and then rotate my pliers to make a loop on one side. Do the same thing and put it on the other side of the wire. Back and forth. This is going to make a nice frame for us to glue to and also sew on our items to. You'll see what I mean here in a bit. So I flush cut the end and I'm just going to make a matching loop on the other side for the frame. You can see what we have there. It's just a bunch of loops back and forth and you could use a ballpoint pen if you don't have the round nose just to make those loops. It would work just as well. And I'm just adjusting in here and just getting to a nice shape that I like. Here's some felt and what we're going to do with this felt, we're going to cut it out. And you can see I have the frame laying there and I just want to cut around just to give enough that we can glue. And then we're going to cut a second piece around the same size. Keep in mind, guys, this is not exact science on this felt. It's just the basic um, bottom of the piece. So you won't even see it. It's just basically to keep your frame in place and also to give you something to sew to and glue, and glue to as well. And here I'm just using my hot glue gun and any step you see me do today with this necklace that I'm using uh, glue for and I'm using my glue gun hot glue gun you can also sew it together if you want to use a machine you want to do it by hand normally I would probably stitch everything but for time's sake for this video, I decided to just use my hot glue gun to kind of speed things along for you and give you the basic idea. You can see I cut around the edges of that, but you could also cut down through the middle, like make a um, curve on the top of the necklace where it goes across the top and it's straight. And I just snipped the edges there to kind of leave a little bit more room for our loops. And here I'm just spreading some hot glue and I'm going to put some of this velvet uh, ribbon on it that has some really nice rhinestones. Mainly, I'm putting it on, I'm going to put it on both sides, but mainly we just are going to see it on the back of it. The rest of it is going to be covered up with other stuff on the front. And you can see here I put my second piece down and I'm just trimming it just like I did the first piece that I put on. And then I'm going to cover the back as well. And once I get that covered, I'm going to take a needle and thread and I'm going to stitch around the edge. 
this is what I'm saying with any step you do. You can either sew it or glue it or both. It's your preference. So now I'm just looking, I have this beautiful um, rose type trim that I want to use. So I'm just trimming like the very edge of it off. There's like a little bit of a nylon edge to it. So I want it to uh, be even with the top. So I trim that and I'm gluing that down. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing with the second piece. I trim the top and then I'm just gonna, and you can see you don't see the velvet ribbon on the front. I just like it, just in case something shows through, I like to have it covered uh, with the same color underneath so I can put my layers of my trims on top and not worry about white peeking through or whatever kind of felt you decide to use whatever color peeking through it and you know you can use any kinds of laces trims ribbons whatever makes you happy you can add flowers you can add anything to it you want to put some rhinestone trim on the piece you can certainly do that so you can see here now i've got some antique tea dyed lace that I that I tea dyed myself and I'm going to start stitching that onto the piece and this is where the frame comes in handy because you can stitch through the frame and it gives it something to really hang on to because you know it's a, it's a necklace piece we want them to be able to you know use it without worrying that things are going to fall off because they're just hot glued on there so I'm just doing a running stitch here and it's just a simple stitch, just in and out, just getting it attached to the rose trim underneath. And you're probably saying to yourself, you're covering the rose trim. Well, I am covering the rose trim, but as you can see through the lace, you can see what's underneath it. And I like the look of that with the pale pink underneath and the roses, and you can see it through that lace. So now I'm just taking a little bit of yarn and that's another thing you could use for this project. Any kind of yarn that you have as well. And I got this fur yarn in this pink and I just adore it. So I'm just trimming the lace piece that we just put down with this. And guys, this is not a science, what I'm doing here. As I said, I'm gonna reiterate it again. Use whatever you like. Just because I'm using fur trim and tea dyed lace or whatever, you pick the colors you like, you pick the items you like, and put it together. If you want to make a gift for someone, this would be a really, really pretty necklace to wear, especially on a, on a special occasion for someone. It would make a wonderful um, Christmas gift as well. So I just trimmed along the top with that same fur uh, yarn. And now I'm going to get our strand strung up so we can use it on our piece. So basically I am just doing, taking a piece of beading wire, stringing on our beautiful bead strand that we got. I'm just doing it exactly the way it came, guys. So you can change it up, you can use a mix, you can use a strand, you can use whatever makes you happy for this. But I just thought this bead strand was super beautiful and would go with the design perfectly. So I've got that strung up. I'm gonna take a number two crimp tube, put it over my wire, and then run the other side down through to make a loop on the end and then I'm going to crimp it. And you always wanna use that back part of your crimper first and then go to the front to shape it up and get it into a smaller uh, bended piece. Okay, so I trimmed that excess wire off on that side. Now I'm trimming this off of the roll because I like to work on the roll because it seems like I have less waste. I'm just doing the same thing on that side. I'm just running the crimp tube, running the 
the second wire back through, crimping it, and then I'm going to trim off this extra piece. And now we're ready to use that. So here I have that and this gorgeous, gorgeous enamel chain from Jesse James Beads that I am in love with. So I'm basically just attaching the chain to the bead strand and I'm kind of deciding where I want to put things, what I want to do. I did end up hanging it a little lower underneath that fur yarn, but I'm just kind of guesstimating there by um, seeing how far it would reach over to our loops. See the loops that we made on the end, that's where we're gonna hook this to. So I cut my little piece of chain and now I'm gonna cut a piece the same size for the other side because it doesn't quite reach without the chain and you want something pretty. You could also use this chain and um, sew it onto the front of the piece as well to give it a really pretty look or use it as the actual um, chain for the piece. And I'm just attaching some oval jump rings here, teeny tiny holes in that chain so and it makes it um, challenging to put your jump ring in. So but I got it, I figured it out and got everything hooked up. And now I'm just hooking it, as you can see, to the loop there with the jump ring, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and just hook it through the hole in the end of the chain. And there's everything hooked up and it's, it's laying right exactly where I wanted it. I'm just straightening it around and it's right under that fur that I had there. So here I am um, adding some more lace to the piece just to kind of finish it up to make it, give it lots of layers and lots of flair. But use your own judgment, guys, for when you're making this piece, you know, make whoever you're making it for, you know their style, how, how, you know, busy they would like the piece or fluffy or whatever. If you know they want more simple, then, just keep it simple with simple trims and simple ribbons. And here I'm just finishing up by putting some more of that furry yarn on the top to kind of really finish that edge and make it look nice. So I'm very happy with that. So I've decided I wanna get out my beautiful, my beautiful buttons. And I'm showing you here, I'm auditioning them basically, I'm putting them, holding them where I think I want them first, and then gluing them on. I showed you the thread there, and that's because, just like I said earlier, you can always sew or glue or both. For time, I am just using the glue gun today, but I will probably go back and just tack that stuff on with some thread and just hand tack it, just so I'm sure things aren't gonna come off of it. So again, I'm just holding them there. I'm just seeing what I like as far as the style goes. These are just gorgeous buttons, very antique, very vintagey. They go well with all of the lace and ribbon. But see, for me, this I made this necklace to my like, what I like, you know. It's my style. I love this vintage boho type. Um, designs in the pinks and the, the creams and all that so I've put some of the the beautiful buttons on there and now I'm just putting the last flower one in the middle there and oh nope I'm gonna put a couple more on here on the top I like the way that looks just looks a little bit more finished and I've got that so that's the basic look of the front that I am very, very happy with. And now I'm getting out my ribbon crimps and a little bit of sheer ribbon. Again, use whatever ribbon makes you happy. But I'm just gonna take these ribbon crimps and put them over the edge of that sheer ribbon and tighten it down on the end just with my pliers. And you can see I'm just working that to make sure that it's hooked and then I gave it a good pull to make sure everything is where it needs to be and hooked in there tightly. 
So I'm going to do the other end of the ribbon here. Same thing. Put it over the end. If I can manage that. And squeeze. And I'm just working that side to side. And there you go. That one's ready to roll. So there's both our ribbons. Finished with the ribbon ends. And I'm going to use some jump rings. And that's my clasp going to open up my jump rings and hook them into the loop and the piece and then through the ribbon crimp end with the jump ring. It really is fairly easy to do this with the ribbon crimps. You could use lark's head knots and tie your ribbon into the loops. You could wire wrap them on. There's a lot you could do with it but here I'm attaching the end, one end of the clasp and doing the same thing on the other side here. I'm putting it through the loop, then through the ribbon crimp, and then closing the, the loop. And once we get that done, we're gonna go up to the other end and add our bar clasp. And that's it, guys. Once we have this clasp, it is a finished piece. Hope you enjoyed our vintage boho necklace with dress it up buttons and Jesse James beats. Bye guys.